When we talk about leaving a narcissistic partner, there is a lot of talk about how to prepare for that, about the side effects of leaving, which are normally centered around the negative parts of it, right? We've got the financial insecurity, instability that can happen, the difficult trusting, the emotional distress, so on and so forth. But there's very few people who are focusing on the positives that happen. There is a lot of positives that happen once you leave that traumatic experience, once you get out of that super toxic relationship and you start rebuilding your life and start taking authority over your life and you start living in a way that you want to live, not just the way that you're dictated to live. And so today in this video, I want to focus on the positives of what happened when you leave a narcissist and how your life can start radically shifting for the better once you leave. I am a huge believer in what you focus on, you are going to get more of. And of course, there are real side effects to leaving a narcissist, like recognizing that you have PTSD or CPTSD, and you need to deal with the problems. I'm not saying ignore the problems and you're just going to get the good things. What I'm saying is that if you're focus is solely around the amount of issues that you are having because you you have to leave a narcissist, you have to get divorced, you have to follow all the paperwork, you have to go to court, and so on and so forth. That is what you are going to be stuck in because you don't have vision. You don't have vision for your life and what your life should look like and what you actually want it to look like. And so instead, you're putting all of your time, your energy, your focus, your attention into the things that you don't want. How would it even be possible that you get something other than that? So today, let's try focusing on the things that you do want and understanding that the life that you want truly to live is literally one decision away. You are one decision away from walking into that ideal life. The problem with that one decision is that people don't like to commit to it. Every day that you wake up, you need to commit to being the version of yourself that loves making that decision, that loves making that commitment to that decision. And so that could probably be its own video. So let's stay focused on this video and just start talking about the positive aspects of leaving a narcissist. Number one, improve self-esteem. This is something that you are uh, going to notice relatively quickly as long as you have a plan for how you are going to structure your day once you leave a narcissist. Narcissists are obviously incredibly damaging to their partner's self-esteem and they they don't help to build up your confidence or to help you honor your self-worth. So this is something that happens relatively quickly again if you have a plan. Another positive aspect of this is that there is greater autonomy. Narcissists so often will control their partners, even about what they are wearing or where they are going and who they are seeing on such a tight level that uh, a lot of times your social network is dissipated once you finally uh, decide to leave the narcissist. And so understanding that you have the freedom and independence to build your social networks, to make the connections that you want to have in your life, not the ones that the narcissist says you should have, you can start over completely if you want. This is another amazing aspect of leaving a narcissist. Of course, the improved mental health, you will have to uh, work through any anxiety, depression, CPTSD, any other mental health issues that may be lingering when you first leave. However, leaving a narcissist is actually shown to improve the mental health of 70% of the people who live, who leave a narcissist. Just simply the act of leaving can improve your mental health in 70% of the people who leave and a reduction of symptoms in those people as well. So understand that some of this stuff is instant or near instant. And I think we really need to understand that this doesn't have to be this super long drawn out process. If you have a plan, if you are ready to make a commitment to the plan, there are a lot of my clients who leave a narcissist and who all of a sudden start having improved physical health, even if they are still in court with a narcissist. In other words, they were losing weight or they were gaining weight. Other symptoms that go away relatively quickly are like stomach or digestion issues, heart issues, um, losing hair. That's another common one that 
people will have. And it's as soon as you get out of that toxic environment, you can start seeing how your physical health starts to near instantly improve as well. And this is because when you start telling your nervous system, I'm safe, I'm moving in a different direction now, I can let go of that old uh, relationship, that old environment, that old atmosphere, those old ways of thinking, your nervous system starts to regulate itself. And the pounds that you couldn't lose before just suddenly come off. The stress mechanism that you were activating inside your body shuts itself off. So you don't have those stomach issues anymore. You don't have your hair falling out anymore. Your body starts to come back into a place of homeostasis, which is where it wants to be. And so improved physical health is something that I see almost instantly or within a few weeks of leaving a narcissist, improve as well. Here's one that very few t people talk about, which is increased productivity. Mm -hmm. Being with a narcissist is incredibly draining, incredibly draining in your mental capacity, in your physical capacity, in your emotional energy space. And so increased productivity is something that happens when you leave a narcissist, you're able to kind of detox and heal from that relationship. You are going to be surprised by how much of your time, even in the background, not even necessarily with your conscious mind, but in the background of your mind, you spent time thinking about the narcissist, obsessing over what they are going to say or do or think about a certain thing that you were thinking about doing. All of this stuff regulates itself out. So now all of a sudden you have so much capacity to start your hobbies again, to go into a different business, to make different friends, to go on trips, to do things that you never could have imagined doing because the narcissist is literally an energy vampire and was taking all of your energy, even non-consciously. You know, consciously, you didn't even know that that was happening. And along with that goes greater creativity, right? There's, again, this sense of stifling in every aspect of your life when you are with a narcissist. So the sense of freedom and creativity, the ability to create a space that you love, the ability to create a life that you love, this would previously be um, stifled by the narcissist control, their criticism, and you would be seeking their approval. Again, some of this stuff happens non-consciously after you do it long enough. And so if you aren't aware that that is what you are doing, now once you leave the narcissist, you're totally free to create an environment that you want to live in. This helps you to be able to dream again, and not just for your right now, but for your future. You know, you start realizing that there's actually no limits on the life that you could be living, on the life that you could be designing. Your life is designed by you. And so when you get outside of the narcissist energy field and you start recognizing that you can create your own space, that is really when productivity and creativity start mixing together and things really start to snowball. And along with that can be improved financial st stability. I know a bunch of people are going to comment on here already and say, no, that was the opposite for me because I ended up tied up in court for so many years. Listen, that is a small part of your life. If you are still tied up in court with a narcissist after years and you have been following a strategy, you need to look at the components of your strategy. Is it you? Is it your attorney? You need to have a plan for what you are doing in court with a narcissist because if you don't, their attorney, who I've said before, is likely a narcissist, is going to continuously keep you wrapped up in court. If you are in court for a set period of time, let's say it's three years even, even if you're in court for three years, is that financially damaging? Of course. However, out of the span of your entire life cycle, three years really isn't that long. Again, it's thinking differently. It's not just thinking in this confined space and having the vision that the narcissist wants you to have. You have to learn to expand. You have to learn to take up space. Even when it comes to the vision that you create for your life, you have to learn to expand the potential of what you want to see in, for yourself, for your children. And so when you look at it that way, mix it together with the creativity and productivity what else can you be doing? What other possibilities are there right before you? Maybe that you're not even looking at right now because you never even thought them possible. Get around different people. Get around different atmospheres. Get around people who are having different conversations, right? Chances are you're just hanging out with people who are talking about the court case all the time, who are just talking about the narcissist all of the time. And again, 
where your focus goes, energy flows. You are putting energy into having this life that you say you don't want, and yet all you're doing is talking about it all the time. There's no room for expansion in that conversation. So please get around people who are talking about something different. Recognize that your financial situation, your legal situation is but a small part of your lifespan. And if you have a plan for how to get out of court correctly, you have an exit strategy from court correctly, which should include financial payments. That should include, that should be included in your plan to leave court. Then you need to start recognizing that the next step is to have creativity, to have that freedom brought in, that productivity brought in. What can I now do with this time, this money, this energy that was previously tied up in court? And of course, better parenting. The ability for you to make rules, make an environment for your children to feel safe in, where you can raise your children, whether that's parallel parenting or counter parenting with the narcissist if they are still involved in the kids' lives, is irreplaceable. You need to understand that you are teaching your children something, whether you stay with the narcissist or whether you leave the narcissist, you are either ex teaching them to accept abuse or you are teaching them that something else is possible, that they have every right to leave that type of relationship. So either way, you are teaching them something. And in the description of this video, I'm actually linking a video that I did on entirely on this topic and about how children learn because there's probably some of you who are staying with a narcissist because you think it's in your children's best interest and that actually speaks to a false belief that you were likely taught when you were a child so go check that out it's in the description of this video you can watch it after this one is done so many people get caught up on focusing on what they don't have yeah i'm free of the narcissist yeah i have another home apart from the narcissist yeah i'm able to make my own decisions when I'm in that that home with my children there. But the narcissist still sees the kids. The narcissist still does this to the kids. The narcissist still does this. Upgrade your skills. You need to learn better communication skills. You need to learn better parenting skills. And that will require you to make different connections. If you do not like something going on in your life, and you think it is 100% due to the other person, you are not taking responsibility for a section of your life. And that is unacceptable. It's unacceptable to outsource responsibility for something in your life to somebody else. And I'm saying this to help you. When you start taking radical ownership of that thing, work like that thing depends on you and your actions if you want a different outcome. Not when the narcissist stops being a narcissist, not when the narcissist starts cooperating, co-parenting, following the court order. Of course, they are not going to do that. They are a narcissist. We've already established that that is who they are. You are the one who needs to start taking this ownership over your life and start seeing how quickly not only your life changes, but how fast your children's eyes open to the narcissistic behaviors of the other parent or who's ever else involved in their lives that's a narcissist. They are going to recognize that. Children are not stupid. They are not idiots. They see what is happening. They can tell the difference between something that is healthy and something that is unhealthy. If you're worried about your children being manipulated by the other parent, by the narcissist, by any other narcissistic adult in their life, you need to have your behavior so starkly in contrast to that manipulation that they can start seeing the difference and seeing how that makes them feel easier. Is it beneficial to them sometimes to be manipulated by the narcissist? Does a narcissist buy them things, take them on trips, tell them, you know, that they're going to do certain things with them? Of course, this is part of the learning process. You didn't do your life perfectly. Don't expect your children to just all of a sudden wake up and see what's going on with the other parent. It doesn't work that way. It's your job as the other parent, as the healthy parent, to continuously model for them what healthy behavior is, what healthy relationships are like, what healthy communication is. Stop worrying so much about what the narcissist is doing and start taking radical ownership of your part in being your baby's parent. That is the most important job that you will ever have and enjoy it. Stop making it this competition. Enjoy being the healthy parent. Enjoy showing up for your children in a healthy way. Is it tough? Of course it is. Name me one thing that's worthwhile in this life that doesn't take some work, that isn't effort. You're not going to find it. So please try to start shifting your perspective. That's the whole point of doing this video is to focus on the things that you get, the benefits that are added to your life 
when you cut out this toxic relationship, when you start making different choices, when you start putting your energy and investing your time, investing your thought life into a different future. I do hope this video was helpful for you. And if you are one of the people who need help parallel parenting, counter parenting with a narcissist, when you have difficult teenagers, then I want you to check out this video next because I made that one specifically for you.